Oh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to our uh, next in a series of webinars focusing on the regions of Highland, Orkney and Shetland, looking at near me in uh, general practice. Um, very good to have you along this afternoon. Um, so just before we fully get underway, I'm going to just run through a few housekeeping. So my name is Mark Bezik. Uh, I'm the National Lead for the Near Me Network and I'll introduce the rest of our, our team of speakers uh, a bit later on. So basically everyone's on mute that's joined us today. Um, there is a Q&A section within the screen on the right hand side, hopefully from what you can see. And we would really like to engage with you as an audience today uh, and use the Q&A for comments and questions and discussion. Uh, to kick that off, it would be really helpful for us if we could find out where you're from. So if you could just put in the, the Q&A chat, just, uh, uh, you know, which health board you're in or which part of, uh, of the region you're from, that would be really helpful to get a flavour of where people are from today. Um, within the uh, Teams Live event that we're running today, you will see some accessibility options on the three dots uh, on your functions bar. Um, and that will give you access to closed captions and subtitles if you need them. And also you can uh, adjust the settings on those in terms of the rate of the subtitles and captions. Uh, if you do experience some difficulties with sound or vision, uh, please try uh, rejoining the uh, event. In, in addition, um, shut down other things on your computer that might be using the internet at the same time just to increase your bandwidth locally and if you can switch to a, 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 a location or a machine that's wired into the network with an ethernet cable for example well, that should hopefully uh, help things out for you. We will be collating questions as they come up um, through the session and we have some time at the end for us to explore those in a bit more detail with you and the speakers will be here at the end as well do participate in that. Uh, the recession is recorded and so you can go back to view this later or share uh, the video with colleagues who weren't able to make today and you just use the same link that you've just joined the event with now uh, to access that video. Uh, any of the uh, internet links that we share throughout the presentation uh, we'll put in the chat but also there'll be a resource sheet at the end that we'll send out along with a short survey at the end. So now we've got that bit out of the way with, I'll just run through who we have here today. So as myself, I'm supported by Rachel Burke, who is the tech program manager, and she was instrumental in running the improvement projects that were around general practice and the use of near me across Scotland late last year. We're delighted to be joined by Dr. Scott Jameson, who's a general practitioner himself, but also is the executive officer of QI Improvement, part of the Royal College of General Practitioners. We've got Dr. Chris Williams from Highland as a general practitioner, and also Dr. Simon Kemp from Orkney. And also we're being very ably supported by uh, David Bath from the National VC team, and I must thank Tobin for uh, managing all the registrations from NES. Uh, we would very much like to engage with you uh, on social media, so please follow at, at NHS near me and myself, Mark Bezik, AHP. Uh, and we have the following hashtags underneath there that we're, we're linking to this series of webinars to try and uh, generate some interest as well. So, the next bit we're going to just going to basically uh, orientate folk to what we're looking to try and do today in, in terms of offering near me as a choice. And we're going to be looking at some of the, the, the benefits and also some of the challenges around this that, that primary care has faced using uh, in the current COVID climate and beyond. Uh, and then we'll have a chance to ask questions. So uh, I would very much like to introduce uh, Dr. Scott Jameson to you now, who's going to be speaking uh, around the kind of national picture uh, around RCDP. So um, if Scott's ready to roll, we will uh, we'll go for that. Thank you, David. Thanks, Mark. Um, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, it's uh, lovely to be here, and thank you, Mark, for taking uh, the time to ask me to, to, to be here today. I'm Scott Jameson, as Mark says, I'm a GP in, in Tayside. Um, I also work in the Art of Avers. 
Um, and in my role um, as executive officer for quality improvement uh, at the RCGP, I was approached by uh, Mark's predecessor, by Claire Morrison, uh, who's uh, now um, chair of the Royal Pharmaceutical Society uh, in Scotland. Um, and she she she, she recognised acutely that um, trying to, to to bring this new platform to to, to general practice and across primary care was certainly not going to be as simple as um, providing the platform and providing the kit. Um, and so um, we we worked really closely together um, with Chris and others um, to uh, develop a series of, 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 of helpful documents, which are all on the tech website, which I'm sure will be, will be signposted too, um, but also to help um, the, 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 the Naomi team understand um, the enormity of what they're asking, um, because we are in a relationship based um, profession and and the RCGP acutely recognises that I sorely miss my, uh, my my clinics with my patients and, and sitting down with them and seeing them and, and relating to them and as good as touching them without a PPE on um, would be nice for once and that sounds very odd but there is something about that human contact to be provided both both in proximity um, and without PPE that just now is just not possible and it's such at the heart of of the roles that we provide as, as doctors and nurses and, and allied health professionals and pharmacists um, and without the COVID it would be completely different but near me has opened up so many new doors and um, it comes at a time I suppose from a national perspective when we were acutely aware of, um, especially in the main RCGP, um, for those that have been to previous conferences, the sponsorship of, of RCGP's conferences historically from online GP providers was a big controversy for us as a college um, and made, made a lot of press. And we were acutely mindful of, of how we were worried that that was going to undermine general practice, I'll be honest. Um, um, you know, be able to access your GP on your phone, it was, it was, it was, it made some stomachs turn, and I think still does in some areas. Uh, that said, we live in a, uh, we now live certainly in, in in a situation whereby you know FaceTiming and and, and other such um, uh, interactions on Skype and on Teams um, is is becoming very accepted, and it is not the same as seeing people in in person. But from a college perspective, we recognise that some people wish to consult like that. Um, it's the choice that some people wish to make. Um, we should not be looking to, to put up a barrier um, if, if that's something that people want to do. And it was very clear for the, for the other providers that had succeeded um, uh, it, it, at that time um, that there were people that wanted to do this. Um, and in the millennial generation that's coming through, um, I think that there will be a growing um, proportion of our patients that want to interact with us by uh, video conferencing and um, doing the reviews remotely and um, using um, Medlink or, 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 or other um, similar platforms. There, there are people that are wanting to, to interact with us in different ways and near me is, is but one of those options um, for, for a consultation. I think uh, we um, are keen to support as a, as a college um, and we're keen to also make sure that it's offered as a choice. Um, we've found in, in my practice in particular um, that, that um, we were kind of hesitant in thinking about it from a clinician's perspective and then again very insightfully uh, recognising the digital poverty issues and the digital literacy issues and also were the public actually as keen about this as we were. Um, the public consultation that was created and again can be linked to um, um, by, 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 by the moderators here, um, we can um, we can highlight uh, within that how the public think about it. And I think we always thought about it as a college and probably as professionals of, well, what do we gain from it? And 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 how, you know, I don't know that when I'm phoning somebody that I can gain more from seeing them as well as, no, that was the completely wrong way to think about it. Um, when I looked at the, 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 the public data where they were so enthusiastic about it because they liked seeing us. Um, they liked that interaction. They liked being able to, 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 to eyeball somebody. Um, and that came strongly across in the in the public data. And so what we do now in my practice um, is we have pre-booked appointments and they're they're kind of pathetic. They're they're near me, they are telephone or they're pre-booked in person if a clinician thinks that that's what's required. And because we now have that pre-booked model, it's reduced our on-the-day demand um, and we offer it as a standard choice. It's just it, there is absolutely no consideration um, or, or preference. It's a 15 minute near me. Um, or because um, we can do telephones, 
more promptly because there's not always the IT hiccups and things like that just to get them on. Um, we split them into two seven minute appointment telephones if it, if it becomes a telephone. We've done in my practice something like 650, 700 near me appointments. Um, my registrar um, uh, as a as a, just got on maternity leave this week. Um, she led the way because of course she was uh, not having immediate patient contact. We were minimizing that and she was doing near me's and goodness did she put us all to shame. Um, entire days of, of, of near me appointments and so successful. Um, so I, I'm really impressed with, with, with how the platform is. So from a national perspective, I would say the college is keen to see that this is an option. Um, we are not uh, in favour of, of any digital property in any form and, and really strongly support the hard work that tech and others have put in to ensuring that people can get access to these platforms. Um, I think there's more work to do. I think in the community settings we can we can do more to make sure people who have a tertiary um, centre appointment with their cardiologist for their bypass in Glasgow can get access in their local area to a near me appointment just as the same as anyone else because why should they be moved on to telephone if, if, if another person who was more enabled could do a, could do a near me? Um, so um, rather than going all the way down to Glasgow for their pre-operative um, discussion, um, they could do it on, on that platform. So that has been looked at, and I know the tech guys are, are, are working towards that. So from a college national perspective, I, I hope that gives an introduction. I hope it sets the scene well. Um, we are very supportive. Um, it's going to be um, really interesting times um, moving forward um, out of this pandemic. Um, but I would strongly uh, support the hard work of Mark and others. I'm really pleased to see Chris here, um, our new um, uh, co-chair of RCGP Scotland. Um, and uh, um, it's uh, going to be interesting. He'll give you the more detailed uh, approach uh, and, and overview now of how they've uh, been looking at it locally. And um, I'm really strongly supportive of the, the, the hard work that's been done here. And um, thank you so much for asking me to, to speak, Mark. Um, and I'm obviously happy to take any questions uh, as we go. That's uh, excellent. Thank you so much, Scott, for giving us that, that national picture and, and the importance of options and choice for, for patients accessing general practice and primary care. And, and again, uh, I think the pre-book model is something that, that uh, other practices may be able to uh, engage with and, and apply, but we can maybe speak about that more in the Q&A. So again, thank you again, Scott, and um, I'm delighted to have Chris, Dr. Chris Williams with us this afternoon, and he's going to be speaking about his experiences in Highland. So, uh, uh, over to you, Chris. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks both. Um, so, yeah, we are, uh, our practice, we're involved with the, the quality improvement project um, earlier this year uh, to really sort of, sort of boost things uh, and try and sort of scale up uh, the, the sort of the use of near me. Uh, and so I I am a, a sort of clinical lead for IT and a sort of a technology enthusiast. Uh, and I guess try and sort of tell you a wee bit about some of our our journey, uh, and a big um, a big motivator f for us was that actually we had realised that there was going to be some uh, equipment and support that would come with this. So the, uh, to be to be frank, one of the things that drove our uptake was that we had a, actually sort of poor equipment infrastructure to, to start with. We had sort of single monitors. We didn't have very, very many webcams. We didn't have um, sort of headsets. Um, the uh, and, you know, there the was quite quite some sort of variable um, sort of, you know, capability of our workstations. So one of the, the, the things that we found the, the most helpful was having sort of a resource, was having sort of equipment shipped, uh, shipped in uh, and having act access to expert resource um, so particularly in the, the form of, of Rachel um, who was able to help us navigate um, some of the sort of technical issues around about sort of making sure everything was set up um, we should sort of so, so we were using near me for for remote consultation as, as pr pr pretty much people across uh, the, the spectrum in, in healthcare have been uh, through the, the pandemic but back at the at the start of the pandemic, we, we hadn't used it in, in general practice. We had, it had been used in Highland uh, amongst secondary care. There was a very careful um, sort of cautious approach to sort of to rolling out to sort of um, uh, finding people who might be interested uh, to specifically av avoid large uh, you know, so long journeys where, where actually there was very little benefit from making the physical journey. Uh, and suddenly we were doing something very different in, in general practice where 
people's journeys might often have been small to get to the to the health center where um the, uh, where we've got an an, an, uh, an quite a relatively elderly sort of population uh, and so in terms of sort of uh, what technology people have used before um so uh, we had a, a, a uh, population that we're, we're, we're used to be able to able to get an appointment um, um, who to, to be able to present their case uh, to be able to, uh, to 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 rock up at the surgery and see somebody sort of face to face um, so th there's there's quite a lot of um, sort of challenges to, to, to the organization to try and uh, adopt a, a technology such as as near me uh, we we've seen various uh, peaks in usage that have corresponded to um, to the, the restriction on on sort of people people's movements um, sort of imposed by the government because of COVID, uh, and I think that's that's been the main driver for us. Actually, when you look at what what the technology can offer, um, that there, there there is a, a huge amount of potential, um, uh, and but not in the ways that might immediately be um, that, that people might immediately think of um, the. And so we have seen in terms of uh, clinician buy-in, um, not not specifically in my practice, but beyond the, there's there's some people that, that much prefer to use the telephone if they can, if they're doing uh, a remote consultation, because that the, the uh, we we know from studies uh, performed before before COVID um, that actually on on the telephone patients raise fewer issues. Uh, the 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 call length is shorter, uh, and unlike face to face, you don't have a lot of the the sort of mannerisms, the um, the sort of uh, the, the the getting to know people, the sort of the the, the telephone transaction, telephone consultations can be much more transactional uh, rather than relational. Um, and one of the one of the issues we found in terms of implementing it is is the cell. Um, so people um, who are not familiar with what with with video conferencing, um, or who might have used uh, FaceTime or or Zoom, uh, but who might not have used Near Me, and so trying to explain what what they need to do, and it, it, uh, and then when they when they do dial in, um, um, sort of trying to sort of talk to them through. Uh, so technical elements of, of how to get a better picture or how to uh, overcome a problem that, that, that's been encountered and if it's a if it's a clinician doing that then that's a you know that comes at quite a high cost um, you know it, it's it's fabulous that we're educating people and uh, helping them uh, you know ad ad adopt these new technologies and become more familiar with uh, and driving the uptake um, but th this there's a system-wide function uh, in in trying to help people um, sort of come to terms with these new technologies, embrace them, uh, and I say that there's some people that are immediately enthusiastic about them that we, we want to support. But then, sort of moving towards uh, the what this what near me is is good at. I think it's got a um, a chance of uh, changing how we deliver cancer care, for example, in terms of making our sort of um, cancer. Uh, models much more patient centered. So instead of um, someone speaking to them, their GP and then going off and speaking to an oncologist and, uh, you know, a, a perhaps a Macmillan nurse being involved uh, again in a slightly separate way. Uh, if, if, you know, having the near me can involve multiple people on the same call in a way that telephone can't uh, and in a way that you just can't sort of gather in the same physical space because our, our sort of health services are, are spread out over um, over a wide space. So I think th things like cancer care. Uh, in our sort of practice, one thing that we focused on was uh, care homes, uh, and es especially with the reduction in footfall, um, of, of uh, specific attempt to, to limit the number of people going into to care homes. Well, actually, with a with a tablet, you can still get uh, you can still see people you can still have sort of contact beyond uh, uh, far beyond what you would get off either from the telephone or from simply a, uh, a carer or a nurse's sort of description um, written down on, on paper and, and relayed um, so uh, another thing that I suppose uh, near me has expo exposed uh, is that some of the shortcomings um, or sort of lack of training just in, in basic IT um, uh, skills in, in uh, across our sort of workforce that we sort of take for granted uh, that, that people know how to um, uh, 
switch microphones or um, uh, so, so especially when we've seen sort of multiple um, computer applications competing for which which one uses the, the microphone or the camera or whether the uh, camera switched on or off. Um, the, the there's some some assumptions that we that we make uh, and people sort of can can be quite um, uh, can have quite difficult experiences if they encounter these simple problems and, and can't navigate around them. Um, so while I'm not suggesting that everyone needs to go on an intensive computer course, actually the, the, there's another system-wide function in keeping uh, staff uh, sort of skilled and trained in the things that we're expected to use as we go on and as they're introduced, especially with near me, as with they're suddenly uh, introduced uh, in, in the midst of a pandemic. Um, I'll probably sort of stop uh, de describing things there and I'm happy to take sort of further questions about how how we implemented it or or how we, we see its use going forward. That's um, great, Chris. Thank you very much again for um, again describing your experience uh, within your practice around maybe not necessarily being immediately obvious as to some of the benefits that potentially could be had. Uh, and, and again, appreciate it. It's one of a range of tools open to you to continue providing services, not just now, but in the future. Uh, and again, in the application to long term conditions uh, and how that could help and care homes. And yes, I agree. I, I've noticed that conversations you have when you're supporting people using the me, there is an assumption that everyone has the same IT skills uh, all across Scotland, and that's definitely not the case. So, yeah, that there's, there's a multiple factors there feeding into this. So um, what I'd like to do now is uh, thank you again, Chris, and I would like to just uh, introduce Dr. Simon Kemp uh, from uh, NHS Orkney, who's going to describe how uh, he's been using near me to support his practice uh, uh, away in, uh, in Orkney. So thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Simon. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, hi, um, do you, can you see the presentation fine? Uh, David's hopefully just going to share your yeah, the presentation's now up. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I'm uh, Dr. Simon Kemp. I work as a GP in a single handed dispensing practice in Orkney. Um, we've got about 1500 patients and I work uh, alongside my wife, um, who also is the other job share. Um, I'll just show you where I actually work. Uh, this is Orkney and I work on these two islands here. Um, and this is the practice area. This is South Romsey and Bury. Our um, practice is located in St Margaret's Hope and we are mostly rural. Uh, this uh, is uh, the, the islands are connected to the main island by Churchill barriers, so we're not completely cut off. This is our COVIDized practice now. Uh, patients are, are allowed to come up to this mark here and then when, when required can come into the building. Um, we do a lot of uh, dispensing, so we've got a we've now actually got a car that drops off uh, dispensing uh, medication to patients to reduce footfall. Um, so 1500 um, patients single handed. Uh, we've got a practice nurse, healthcare assistant and a variety of dispensers and receptionists. And we probably have about 30 to 40 patient contacts to, uh, a day. That's just an estimate. Um, we have sort of indirect patient contacts and direct patient contacts. The indirect patient contacts come through via tasks. The receptionists uh, take the messages and send them through emails through tasks. We have the document letters that come in and we also still have a few paper uh, letters that come in. And the direct contacts that we have for patients include uh, telephone, uh, email, we're getting quite a lot of emails. Uh, we've got an, a thing called online consult in emails, which where patients can complete various questionnaires and send them in. We get lots of pictures now for dermatology things and a lot of descriptions on emails. And we also have uh, a direct uh, contact from uh, patients through the surgery and uh, near me. The near me and the telephone is probably 50-50. Uh, we have pro we see probably about three to four patients a day at the surgery, so most of it is done remotely. Um, the history in our practice about near me, um, 
We started probably one or two months after the start of the pandemic. As uh, Chris was saying, we were offered equipment. We, we were only working with one screen. Um, we all have two screens now, cameras, and we found the, uh, the headsets. Uh, a lot of us didn't really get on with the headsets, so we use speakers and that seems to work well if you've got a, a, a room that uh, doesn't travel the noise. Um, so the other thing is internet speeds we need and training of the patients and the staff as well. Um, why, why use near me? Um, well, I certainly find it quicker. Uh, you get more clinical detail uh, when you see the patient. Um, there's no waiting for telephone messages. I'm sure uh, we've all heard call protection quite quite a lot, and that takes quite a long time on lots of different patients. You also have the buy-in from the patient. You know, they, they have to um, log in, they have to put their uh, name and date of birth, and there is some ownership there, the patient uh, from the patient. Um, and some patients prefer the use of this um, and just be careful to avoid your own perceptions about who is quite who you think would like to do it and who you think wouldn't. Uh, we have quite a few people that I think probably wouldn't have done it who really like it and vice versa. Um, if you're running late, um, the receptionist can update the patient um, by saying the, the, doc the doctor's running late and give them some idea of when they might get seen. And increasingly with uh, the new contract, we're having lots of other uh, healthcare professionals linking in. And we, we, often, we, we frequently have other people linking in, like the community link workers, other family members from different areas can also link into the consultations. So how to use um, the, the receptionists uh, at our practice offer to help the patients uh, work near me out so they sometimes do a trial run first that takes five to ten minutes of their time but once the patient's up and running uh, they have they can do it repeatedly um, uh, they can be patients can also be apologetic if they feel they're not getting in or it's not working so just be careful uh, you know take time with them be positive about them and if it doesn't work out use a telephone try try next time um, always confirm the details of the patients, where they are, and is anyone else with them. Um, uh, also, there's a no recording without consent, uh, uh, usually uh, at the start of the near me consultation, which is quite useful. I've had one patient that wanted to record it. They asked and I didn't have a problem with that. Explain where, where you are as well and that it's all con confidential. Ensure the face is lit and patient uh, just be aware that it's a two way process and patients do pick up facial expressions. Um, I, I think I've been caught out a couple of times where my face has said something else <laughs> which you, you get with uh, with, tele with telephone calls. You can have different facial expressions and the patient wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be aware. But with this, they do. They are fully aware and then that is very positive. That can work very positively. So be very mindful of where the camera is and the interactions and what the patient is getting from the, your, your face as well as what you're getting from their face. Um, use in tandem with pictures and telephones. You know, often they will send uh, uh, e a photograph of a skin lesion, but you can sometimes look at it uh, as well on the email. You get more definition by emails, but surprisingly sometimes the video uh, you uh, i saw somebody's throat the other day through the video and i was surprised that you can actually see quite well the back of the throat again it depends on lighting um the, uh, the other thing is uh, you a lot well m myself included i don't really like seeing myself on the screen and when you're usually talking to people normally you don't see a, a picture of you next door to them so I often just cover up my uh, uh, my picture with a post-it. <laughs> um, the examination, uh, just uh, the history, but as with most uh, medical things, the history is 90% of the uh, the consultation, and uh, uh, and, and use that as the the, the uh, as part of the consultation. Use the slight delay you get with near me as well. 
let the patient speak and then you have to be more you have to decide on the question and they have to decide on the answer a bit so so let the the patient speak and again be mindful most of the story is with the history look at where they are where they are they in bed what's their location look at their appearance um, you get all sorts of information from that social support is there somebody there with them um, and are they alert what, you know what what's their demeanor are they in pain and also be looking at the appropriateness of using near me sometimes it's not appropriate in various clinical settings not to use near me and be be aware of that um, regarding the examination sort of picked up a few things along the way use what's available with the patient you know looking at the a lot of patients have blood pressure monitors sats monitors thermometers so if they've got that use that uh, breathlessness you can uh, assess that uh, on the video in various ways the pulse rate I seem to use quite a lot um, again the, the patient to record their own pulse by uh, feeling their own pulse and then getting them to say tap 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 and that is quite reassuring um, some of the occupational health which I also do um, some of them have suggested that you can look at BMIs in various ways and if their belly is below their belt then their BMI is more than 35 but these are very arbitrary things um, but if you're not happy with the the patient it, with the history or the examination you get them in um, and obviously there should be a lot of safety netting with all calls and all contacts with patients um, we did a we tried to do a pilot project on chronic disease management um, so we have uh, we, we've got a variety of different remote uh, mo monitoring things that we have given to various patients that scales measuring tape bp machine and um, the eight wheat blood sugar diet from um, dr michael mosley did with the view that we're trying to get patients to reduce weight um, what we do is uh, these are given to the patients and then they're followed up by near me on a monthly basis with the practice nurse um, and this this can be discussed at the chronic disease annual check so they're not being brought in specially for this they're just it's an opportunistic thing um, and I think that's it thank you thank you Simon that was uh, really good to hear those uh, practical real life examples from from there in Orkney and, and again uh, challenging our perceptions as to as to which patients uh, can or can't use uh, in a video appointment so that's really good um, and again that, that 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 understanding that if you're not happy get them in and that, that's a really good good reassurance to to, to share with people so um, what we're going to do now I'm going to just um, share a couple of more screens before we open up for Q&A <clears throat> so bear with me a minute uh, let me just pull this up. So um, the guides documents that we wrote, they're available on the, the tech.scot websites. Those are the links, but we'll make an effort to put those links for general practice and out of hours practice in the chat, but they'll also be on the resource sheets at the end. Um, what I would like to do now is open up um, I'm, I'm going to hand over to to put our cameras back on hand over to Rachel and hopefully we can um, have some opportunity to explore some of the issues that are come up in the q and I haven't looked at the Q&A yet so um, I'm really interested to see what that looks like so uh, let's just open up the floor and people's cameras and we'll, we'll see what happens next thank you Thank you. So there's been a couple of questions coming in uh, during the presentation. So one is, how do we encourage patients to ask for a near me consultation? I'll open that up to the presenters and see what you think. Rachel, I might to jump in and say it. It can help if your reception staff are, are sort of presenting options to to people who are asking for an appointment um sort of to to be able to talk them through what those options look like 
pe uh, people will be able to understand things that are tangible and familiar to them. Uh, so if they're, um, you know, they, they understand what a face to face is like, they understand what a telephone's like and probably and carry a telephone around with most of them carry a telephone around with them with them wherever they go. Uh, but the, when there's uh, some specific equipment needed or whether, where they need a, uh, an internet connection, uh, then it gets a bit more um, uh, a bit more complicated and tricky. So having something on the website to be able to, to, ex to explain, to demonstrate is important. But in terms of the contact point, having someone be, being able to sort of uh, say, uh, you know, w what's, what's involved or sort of uh, be able to, to put forward how simple things are. Uh, and uh, initially, our reception staff didn't know what what near me looked like. You know, they weren't being sort of active participants. Uh, and I say, especially if you want, uh, as, as Sir Simon does, to, to be have them um, sort of jumping, dipping into calls to, to update people to, uh, and to especially if your uh, reception staff uh, are are helping upskill the the, the the patients, checking that they that their microphones and things are working, showing them that they that they've done things correctly, um, you know, giving that positive reinforcement. Then I say, yeah, your your administrative sort of uh, the non clinical sort of part part of your team um, assume a sort of vital role in just helping getting that message out. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. And we've had that feedback from a range of practices, just how important that administrative role is. Simon, have you found that similar in your practice in Orkney? Uh, yes, the uh, receptionists do uh, do what go through it with the patients. Uh, quite a few of the patients uh, are quite happy just to um, do it themselves, but there's one or two that uh, require that and I, I like I said I got a number of um, patients who you wouldn't think could do this at all that, uh, do, that and they prefer to do it now and you can see the some of the facial expressions some of the, uh, the you know the, the the feedback you get is so so helpful um, so once you've invested in a sort of five or ten minutes of training with some patients not uh, you know probably about 20 percent of patients need that, 80% uh, can manage by themselves. But if once you've done that, then every time they uh, book in again, they can do it. So it's, although it seems, uh, a, you know, five or 10 minutes of uh, reception time is a lot uh, when they've got a lot of other things to do as well. But once it's done, it's, uh, it's done. Really great point there, Simon. Scott, did you have anything on, um, the reception and the role of admin and reception in supporting patients to use near me. Um, echo what, what, what Chris and Simon said there. Um, for for us, it was critical. Um, you know, in any new project, be that you know near me or or, or anything else you roll out in a practice, it's um, the, the 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 admin buy-in um, into your practice is, is is really critical because if you don't have uh, you can have a vanguard gp if you wish to but nobody's going to put the appointments if you don't have the whole team on board with it and there's no sense in just one one clinician having that as an accessible model and and the you know the patient wishes to consult with another another colleague or a nurse or or somebody else in the practice so um you know our admin got into the way of thinking it of of as, as a first line option and that was just a game changer for us and being able to to accelerate the uptake and and likewise with the um you know, in out of hours, I do the same, and in um, in care homes, I do the same. You know, I, I it's it's the it's the, you know instead of saying oh do you, do you wish a, a visit automatically you know, when they say that the, 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 they're not feeling as well and their their legs you know um feeling like you know a bit swollen today but it's not red and and you, it doesn't look any skin changes I say well well why don't we start with a near me and then I'll 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 see if I need to come out um and and I can I think of it as a first option in my head and I think when us and the admin and and, and my nurses are thinking about that as well um I I think it just um. Again, it just becomes a fair option of the options that are available for how we tackle a problem. It's utilising the most appropriate tool at that appropriate time. Um, I think our, our secondary care colleagues have really got into that um, um, as their default because they know that 
when you're speaking to somebody new, and I think about this, I suppose, from like the pharmacist perspective, I, I think pharmacy is going to take off, I hope, as a, as a near me option. If you wish to discuss something with a pharmacist, I think it could um, easily be as the first option on near me. But when speaking to somebody new, um, being able to have that face-to-face -face, um, en engagement, um, albeit if it can't be in person, I think will be better. It's that that warm feeling I mentioned earlier after a FaceTime with your mum that you can you can feel like oh that was nice to see mum um well that was nice to see you know Dr Williams he seems a you know he he, he listened to me he was he was looking at me he was you know, there was visual cues there was non-visual cues there were so many subconscious and other bits to the, that communication beyond the telephone that I felt that I gained something that I didn't gain on the phone so um I think when everybody's sold on that um it, it just snowballs from there Rachel so um, sorry, that was a really long-winded answer to your very concise question. My apologies. No, no, thank you. And I think it's just yeah, reinforcing just the benefit that video can have on the patient themselves, but as well as your relationship with them. And I really liked your point, Chris, that you made around telephones feel maybe a little um, transactional, whereas video and near me kind of build is more relational. And that's a really good way of putting that. Uh, there were some questions around what clinical presentations do you find most useful for using near me? Are there any that work? Are there any that maybe aren't suitable? Are you able to share from your experiences? Simon, we'll start with you. Um, the most uh, appropriate ones and uh, well, certainly, I don't know. I, I, I think most most uh, consultations can be done by near me, to be honest. Um, I, I think you have to be careful, obviously, with the some of the paediatric um, ones. Sometimes uh, I've got more of a low threshold to see some of these uh, um, um, uh, children. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I think, uh, yeah. I, I think most most cases. I, just going back to the uh, previous point, actually, I, I, I noticed that when we started. Um, myself and a uh, job share partner we both had quite different views on um, contact with patients uh, uh, one was for telephone and one was for near me uh, i was very much for near me and uh, uh, katrina was very much for telephone but as time's gone by uh, we've kind of slightly diverged a wee bit i've gone a little bit more to telephone <laughs> And Katrina's gone a little bit more to near me, so we, the, all the patients now are are are, um, are uh, you know they are offered either near me or telephone, and there's no. It used to be, oh, you've got an appointment with uh, 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 Dr. Simon Kemp, so would you uh, like a near me first rather than would you like a telephone first? So it just depends how you say it. But but going back to the consultations, I think. Uh, I think most uh, most consultations can be done by by near me, uh, really. Can I come in over the kids, Rachel? Is that okay? Because yeah, uh, yeah, Simon, I wonder maybe I don't know if you do you do it of hours yourself as well, but in out of hours, I find the kids are a lot easier on telephone uh, on the near me because uh, I, I it's often which kid is it you're worried about? Sorry, and it's like it's this one here, and they're like bouncing <laughs> around. And they're like aha. Uh -huh. All right. Well, that's that's really reassuring, and 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 I think I can't think in out of hours of many times that I've admitted children who I haven't, with initial eyeball, been walking up to the room, going, "Okay, so we're probably needing to go to hospital reasonably soon here," because they're so visual children as well, and they don't hide disease very well when they're sick. So um, often in out of hours, I would say, and, and it's the same with the, the this issue with, the, with rashes in out of hours. The rashes of out of hours are very very easy on near me because they're so overt, you know, the shingles and the horrendous cellulitis and the erythrodermics and the infected shingles and the um, uh, exam, you know, infected uh, eczema with therapies. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're so they're so barn door, um, and it's not a, a nuance of oh, is this Grover's or is this scabies or is this a neutrophilic dermatosis? We don't need good pictures or dermoscopy in out of hours. So um, I, in the daytime, I do prefer pictures because I'm a I'm a, I'm a derm uh, interest myself. Um, so I prefer pictures and dermoscopy, but uh, in out of hours, um, especially for kids and for the the, the skin things, it's uh, it's near me all the way um, in, in, in those situations. Thank you, Scott. Chris, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, I, I might turn that question 
uh, on, on its head slightly and so if, rather than say what conditions that is near me useful for us, it's more what does your service sort of need, what sort of service are you needing to, to provide? Uh, uh, especially what we sort of picked up at the start uh, that, that there's some uh, preference expressed in terms of patient preference or clinician uh, preference for, uh, for for these different modalities or the different tools that's involved. Uh, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of remote consultation, it's not just near me that sending clinical photographs, sending photographs or clinical photographs uh, can uh, be useful. Again, the, the utility also then depends on how easily you can process, uh, you know, uh, deal with sort of images or lots of images or images coming in in different uh, ways, shapes or forms. Um, you know, email is not an, an ideal way of, of uh, sending and receiving these things, although it's easy uh, and then we're left uh, at the with the dilemma of how to, to store. So uh, we're really sort of on a journey of, on how these different tools come together and integrate together so that you can provide a, uh, a, ser a service that, uh, again, that can flex and respond to, to say, to moments like at, at present where we really don't want footfall. Uh, uh, and we'll hope that there's a, that a time in the not too distant future where actually we can ac accept more footfall and uh, even encourage it. Uh, in in some some uh, point in the future, but near me, I say it's one of many tools, and it's how they they all fit together. Thank you for that, Chris. We've had a few questions um, posed to the panel around how do we encourage reluctant clinicians to, or GPs to use near me? I'm really interested to hear your views, as I think that seems to be a tough one. It's been raised a few times in this chat. Um, can I come in initially and then go for it, Scott? <laughs> create clinic and tell it's like no. Um, okay, um, they need to. So definitely, obviously, I mean, just the basics of obviously try it out first yourself. And 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 when you're doing it in your practice between the rooms and things like that, there is a buzz, there is a an excitement. I remember the first time we did it, and there was this. Oh, that's quite good. That's quite that works, and that's because you're you know using hardwired Ethernet cables and. You know, good quality cameras and everything works instantly so it starts off well and then of course the first time you have somebody try to use you know 2g outside when they're in their car and they've pulled up somewhere and you're just like this is less than ideal um you know suddenly you're you know that that dip down that we we would all expect i i think the practice systems really helped me um and so when we would we initially did um everything on the day and then it was ad hoc near me off of um um, off of a triage or off of a telephone initial appointment and that was very variable not only that but because we didn't have enough kit in every room um, and I know that that, that, that that's um, something that we've worked hard to address um, nationally um, and boards do have funding now more funding um, uh, two million pounds uh, pot which has been divided um, and weighted to each board to help fund additional IT provision of which near me certainly fulfills um, some of those uh, asks so you definitely got to have it in every room because um, you've got to break down those barriers and those hurdles and then um, if you're if you're system can agree to it having it as a as a as a pre-booked way that people can agree that that's what they what they normally do first um and um you know the the the, the numbers speak for themselves um you know 500 600 get you know 500,000 heading towards 600,000 successful near me calls so for the people that say oh uh, my, my one didn't work i'm really sorry if, if it didn't work and it's 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 the the nature of of the beast it's the same way that sometimes your facetime doesn't work and and, and that's just the way of it sometimes but um it, 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 there's definitely ones that have worked and we, we can see those in the numbers so um you know uh, um, um, uh, the trial of n equals one is is not a trial so um uh, but, and i think the public um i, I shared the, the the public data i pulled out a few of the graphs really strongly showing um, some selection biases i suppose in it but it's a big number it was like five thousand respondents and um, there the, the, there's a lot of people out there who do want it so um, yeah, I think it's uh, that, that that was my approach in my practice, and 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 we've now reached parity. Um, we all have near me clinics um, um, uh, pre-booked, so um, it's 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 not it took a, it took a little while, but the kit in every room was probably the biggest hurdle actually. Excellent, thank you, Scott. Chris, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of thrills in, in, uh, that can be involved with being an early adopter, and also uh, a, a lot of pain at at times. Uh, the, I think I have a huge amount of sympathy for 
for people who have sort of trained uh, and worked for, for many years in certain ways uh, and have comfort and familiarity with something that just always worked and that was slick uh, and that suddenly you know say oh, there's a, so many different changes to to the environment uh it probably comes back to the the, the dual monitor thing that i saw mentioned as well you know what, what what's the advantage of a dual monitor uh, well actually once you um you know the, the amount of information that we're sort of trying to to sort of juggle uh, between sort of the, the the GP clinical record between the the, the letters that are in doc document uh, and other test results between sort of guidelines that might be published on a, an, an internet page between other sort of s uh, sources of uh, advice uh, uh, and so suddenly you've got all these different things that you're trying to sort of keep keep track track of within a consultation. So I, I'd say I have sympathy with colleagues who. Are, um you take a look at it and think well actually there's uh, i've got other ways of of working that um that are, are more comfortable and i think when people can see a, a benefit they'll 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 change they'll move they'll, they'll they'll adopt these things uh and i think we need a supportive environment sort of around you know that that and you know enables people to find out uh you know how how these how some tools fit in amongst other tools how to you know easy ways to upskill that uh, um, and sort of you know dip in and sort of try different things uh, and as our, our our patients become more educated in in some of these things that that will drive change in itself excellent thanks chris simon did you have anything Oh, yeah. uh, just to say that uh, I, I enjoy doing it because it's uh, you pick up new things all the time from the patients in a different way, whereas before we've always been told how to examine um, and take histories. And but this is a completely different way. And you do pick up different observations from patients and they pick up different things from you. Um, I think the other thing is the patients, uh, once they've tried it, they'll probably be expecting it again and if you're uh, you know so so it, it's kind of coming in in the back door really whether you, you whether people like it or not and the other thing was the patient feedback usually we get very positive patient feedback from using it Thanks, Summer. And while I have you, there was a question around the time taken to do a near me versus telephone. You mentioned that the tele the near me is often quicker. Um, are you able to, able to expand on that? We've had some uh, communication from the other end saying perhaps near me may take longer, but I'm really interested to hear your perspective and your experiences with that. Yeah, well, so, well certainly the, the way I reason why I th think it's quicker is because they come into uh, a uh, sort of uh, um, a room where you can see them. So when you're ready, you can pick them up. You don't have to phone the telephone. And I, I've quite often been quite frustrated phoning patients because quite some some of them have the, the uh, various telephone devices that you have to bypass before you actually can get even to to actually get the the dialing tone to speak to the patient. Um, uh, and also the so so they're in the uh, waiting room, the remote waiting room, and you can pick them up when you want to, um, and and that's it's very it's usually very quick, um, and uh, and yes, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, and uh, but quite often if something doesn't work, like the uh, voice or you can't hear somebody, you can press the refresh button and it works. So. Um, it very it's it's very unusual that doesn't happen. So it, it seems to work well, and I think it's quicker than telephone. Thank you, Simon. Chris or Scott, what are your views on this from your experiences? Um, I think it just takes longer because I enjoy it more. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I I think you're right, Simon. I think it could be quicker because you know I just talked about kids or you know because kids on the telephone. I'm so detailed about going through all the things about well, what's that child done today and how have they been today and and all these things. Whereas on the tel on the, the near me, I just glance at them and say, you know, child looks extremely well and uh, struggled to to keep the child child still whilst uh, on the call as they were desperately running away to the TV, you know, that that's a very easy thing to write in the set of notes, which uh, maybe it takes me a little while longer to try and uh, extract on a telephone call. But I, I think I do just enjoy it more. And um, I, I think of it like a normal 15 minute appointment with a patient that I, I, I really 
look forward to having in person for those that wish to see us in person um, in, in due course after COVID settles down. So um, I think 50 minutes is, is the standard that RCGP um, so I'd say that with my hat on uh, today. Chris has got his own independent hat today. But RCGP's RCGP standard is uh, trying to offer 15 minute standard appointments. Um, and uh, that's that's a, got some, what will I say, that is uh, there to encourage a, a dialogue to say that we shouldn't be rushed. Um, uh, you know, 15 minutes is just a number. Um, but um, it, it, you know, what we want to say is people should be given the time that they need. And, and I think um, that uh, I quite enjoy the 15 minutes, but sometimes there's more, sometimes they're less. Um, and, and if they're less, I'm certainly not sitting doing nothing. But um, uh, I don't know, Chris, um, what you thought. Yeah, you know, I, I recognise you're sort of uh, putting forward the, the what you want to do with this appointment um, sort of uh, approach. Uh, one thing I would probably pick up on is that, that we do get reports that it's there's more people find it difficult to finish in in a finish everything in a in a video consult. There's a sort of su a subset of of, uh, sort of patients that at the end of a video consultation, the the, the GP thinks, well, I, I still need to look at this person, or or we still need further information. Um, so that the that, that that's sort of one thing that has has been sort of fed back that it's not as efficient a, a sort of a method of of being able to 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 start and finish the uh, the um, the, the what the, the patient journey that you're that you're trying to deal with okay folks i'm i'm, uh, I'm gonna have to jump in there because um we're we're running out of time um and, and i'm appreciative there's there's a there's a lot of questions still unanswered uh, and what we will do as a team is make sure that we collate those and share them with the with the panel so that they can have an opportunity to to answer the ones we haven't quite got around to. but it's been fantastic that there's been so many people with questions and that the panel have been able to to answer i think most of those but i appreciate there's there's, there's probably more discussions to be had and, and rachel and i will maybe have a think about what we do uh, to meet that need um so what, what i would like to do is just very quickly um just we 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 very much like to gather feedback from today so i am going to just put in the chat um, a link to a very quick five a very quick I think it's about five questions two minute survey um, just in the announcements and that would really get a feel for how you found today and what sort of opportunities we might be able to provide you in the future to, to support you with this this line of work um, it'd be super to, to get some feedback on that um, you will get a resource sheet with links to the various uh, guidance and resources. We, we have posted some up there this afternoon. Rachel's done some of that for us very kindly. Um, and all I really want to do really is just to thank uh, everyone that's, that's been willing to take the time to not only uh, share their experiences here today, but also to join us from, from, from your regions as well. So there's been a real, I did have a quick look, there's been people from, from Shetland or in Highland and a few other places as well. So yeah, welcome everybody. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's just good to be able to share this with you and see whether we can, we can enable near me as a, as a choice in more places for, for patients accessing primary care. So again, we've, we've had some really good real life examples uh, of issues and, and how um, practices have responded and flexed to, to different needs and changing scenarios and also how they, they anticipate using near me in the future uh, not just during this current pandemic so um, I think that is probably it for now I can't think of anything else we need to do other than the recording will be available on the link that <coughs> excuse me you joined with today you get a resource sheet and um, we will endeavour to answer the unanswered questions that have been posed. So uh, again, thank you all. Thank you to uh, David for, for queuing us all up and seeing us right and for Tobin for organising the, the registration side of things. And again, thank you to, to, to Scott, Simon, Chris and Rachel for putting this together. And uh, we'll hope to see you again maybe at uh, another one of our webinars and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.